May the fourth be with you. Good afternoon and happy Monday, May 4th. Or if you're a Star Wars fan, happy <clears throat> May 4th and may the fourth be with you. So uh, we are getting into week three of our training cycle. I have some strange Imperial force next to me who's gonna help me with the class here. And so uh, we wanna work on some different techniques this week and also we want to put some together uh, same tactical combination so keep that in mind and that's where we're going with uh, for this week and we're going to be building up something cool and new which is a spin back fist which we'll tell you more about that uh, as we get closer to it uh, the other thing is don't forget our warrior challenge will be starting soon which we'll be sending you information about that see if you're a true warrior uh, it's going to be really cool Look out for that because you don't want to miss that. So here we go. So going over week three for Vance. So what we're going to start off with is just a little quick warm up and punches. But instead of just doing punches, we want to kind of concentrate on keeping one hand up, throwing a reverse punch because it's going to work in the combination that we're going to practice. Okay. So we got our right leg out in front, hands up bar position from there, and I'm just going to count. Now when you throw your punch. We know if you're watching this, you're an advanced student or you know, a teen adult, we know you know how to punch. But what I want you to do is keep this hand up, and when you punch, make sure you aim those two knuckles and point it at your target so it's coming out, and then pull them right back. So if this hand is dropping and you're not focusing on that, then you're really not focusing on what's important, okay? We're not so concerned about the punch itself, but how are you covering up when you throw it? Okay, so I'm gonna count for some. You can follow Mr. Chino here, and here we go. One, two. And the cool thing in TV land is if he drops his hand while he's punching, I get to round kick him in the ear. So that'll be a lot of fun for me. All right, four, five. Now, when we do it, we want to make sure we take a small step with this leg and really get our body out there. So that way we can extend our arm farther. And the other thing is it will give you more power. I know you might be thinking, well, you said don't put a lot of weight on your front leg. Well, that's true, but in our tactical mindset, we're doing short combinations and we're really working on kind of ending the threat quickly and getting away. So for this particular instance, we want to do that. And you'll notice from the side, if I don't step, my arm goes here. If I step, I get several extra inches. So a couple more. Four, five, yeah, go ahead and change legs. All right, so we got other leg in front, same thing, stepping, extending out, and remember pointing those two knuckles at our target. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna point something out of Mr. Chino just in case you might be doing it too, is if you're punching and not locking out your fist at the end and driving these two knuckles in your imaginary target, then you're setting yourself up to get hurt. And the reason why is what you practice is what you're gonna perform. So if I throw this punch and I'm not making a tight fist on impact, then I have the threat of I might punch with an open hand, which is gonna break my knuckles. So right as you go to impact, that thing should be tight. Thumb on the outside, those knuckles sticking out, and nice and solid. All right, four, five, six. See, I can already tell a difference in him. He's cracking and popping like, Rice Krispies, so now we know we're getting some power in that thing. Five, good, all right, go ahead and change legs. Alrighty, so what we wanna do is go over the back fist, okay? Now on the back fist, it is not a knockout technique, but it's quick, it's deceptive, and it's designed to hit weaker targets, like the temple right here, which there's not much there, but just bone and skin, okay? Uh, so that's a good target because there's not a bunch of muscle and thick bone there so it can do some damage and help you get away. So on the back fist, you're using these two knuckles again, and from a guard position, it comes over about even with the other hand. You twist the body, take that step, and you're throwing that strike, twisting right on the side of the head. The other cool thing is, if he's got his arm up, I can use this forearm and kind of hit his hand away and still get in my target. If I just go from here, he can block it, but if I come through and get more of my form here, I can knock it away, 
still get my knuckles in there, okay? And this bone is a good uh, target to hit someone, knock someone's arm away. So, here we go. Hands up from here, okay? Just taking that small step and back fisting. Side views, you'll see it kind of extend out for my target. Here we go. One, two, three. And then get a big torso twist when you throw that back fist. So you want everything to move. There's where your power comes from. All right, four, five. Yeah, that was a good one. I could hear that one. Six. Yeah, all right. Change it up, other side. So same thing. Remember, this one stays up. Rotate, extend it out there. Not straight up and down, but a little angle out there. All right, one, two, three, four. You can always tell when someone's really putting their power into it, because like Mr. Chino, his, his cheeks are flapping on there. So you can tell he's getting his whole body in there. So that's a good thing. So if you have some way of seeing yourself and your cheeks are flapping, or you're hearing a little wind going through the air as you throw your back fist, you know you got good power. All right, so we're putting it together. Now we're gonna come through back fist. So this is kind of our double hit. We use our back fist like a block block the front arm, it can strike the side of the head to stun you, and then the back arm is kind of your knockout. So if he's right here, it's boom, and then the other one follows right and finishes him off. And if you notice my body, everything flows. There's no downtime as I turn and throw those strikes. Okay? And so that's how I get them in really quick, one, two, just like that. Okay? So even if they start to turn their head after the back fist, the knuckles are coming straight through. Okay? So here we go. Couple from this side. Got that right leg in front. And one, two, three. Uh, just for a visual, if you could watch him, you can see how fast that second arm comes because the body's already twisted and it just goes with the flow. Four and five. Good. Change legs. Same thing on the other side. And five good ones. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, good. Check your arms out there for a minute. All right, taking a little quick break there. All right, so moving on. Now, what we kind of do is we break up each lesson with a, a strike combo, a block, and then a kick. All right, the kicks don't necessarily have to be new kicks, but just a new way to use them. So what we want to do is we're going to go straight into the kick. Now, we want to work on a round kick and a side kick, and I know you guys know how to do a round kick and a side kick. However, we want to use it in a different way. So what we're thinking of is not kicking high, but going low for where the legs are, where you low round kick the first one, and then you can side kick the second one. And what do you mean by that? is if I got my partner here, for example, he's facing me, and he's just kind of standing there, and you know maybe it looks like we're, things aren't gonna go real well, and this is gonna escalate into a problem. I can't talk my way out of it. You know, I have the ability to ground kick, side kick, and take out his legs, and then fall through with a hand technique if I need to, or maybe that knocks him down, and gives me the ability to escape and get away, because that's my ultimate goal, is to always get away and be safe, okay? Doesn't matter um, if anyone's, oh, you should have stayed and fight, you know, you're a coward. No, I'm a, I'm a safe person. That's what I want to be safe, okay? Same thing, if he had his feet side by side from here, yeah, you know, maybe a round kick the first one based on how he is, or, you know, round kick, side kick, and I can hit the side of the leg, I can hit the front of the leg, I can hit the inside of the leg, based on whatever they give me, okay? And the cool thing is, because I'm kicking low, regardless of what your flexibility is, you barely have to move. So, let's go and practice that a couple times. Oh, got a right leg in front, hands just up, so you come through, just lift, round kick, pull the knee in, side kick, okay? And I'm not gonna say you don't have to pivot, because pivoting obviously gives you more power, but it's not a huge factor if you know how to turn your hips and move your legs properly. So you come through, round kick, turn, side kick, yeah, just like that. But you still have to hit with the proper part of your foot. Round kick, we're gonna use the top of our foot, and then for the side kick, we're still gonna use the heel, 
Okay, so here we go. Round, side, boom. Just real quick, so just right here. Round, side, keep it low. Good, one more, round side, boom. Good, and you can even modify how much you pull in for a side kick as long as your technique is solid. I don't need to pull it real far, just need to change the momentum a little bit so I can get the push of my knee and I'll get the power I want. So, other side, here we go. And round side, one, and two, three, four. Good, all right, change back. So now we put it all together. So remember we had our back fist punch. Now we can do one way or the other, it just depends. Okay? Maybe the first thing I do is back fist punch, then they come back at me, I round side, finish the job. Or maybe I round side, and then they come at me, and I finish with a back fist punch. So we can do either one. So let's start with kicks first, upper body second. So here we go, we got round side, back fist punch, okay? One more time, round side, back fist punch, okay? And so ability to throw these quickly and make them flow, that's the difference between doing this as say, an advanced student and doing it as a beginner. Okay? As a beginner, you haven't done these, rep, these kicks enough that you have to think about them too much. Where when you're advanced, we say round kick and you just do it. You're more of a beginner, we say round kick and you say, okay, um, gotta pick the knee up, point, Tracked. So if you're wondering, oh, I'm a advanced student, I want these fancy things with like spins and all this, you know, that's fun and cool, but as far as tactical and what works, it doesn't work. Okay? Mr. Watkins and I were just talking about Star Wars and, you know, the movies and when they fight with the lightsabers and, and how sword professionals watch those and they're like, that's not how it would work. And it's true because, you know, they're there for excitement and flashiness, but, you know, in real war, you don't spend much time on one person because someone will sneak up behind you and take you out because it's not about honor. War is about winning and surviving. So, here we go. All right, kicks first, upper body second. One, round side, then, ah, let's look at the hammer fist over there, Mr. Chino. All right, so work your speed up as you get more comfortable. Say it in your head. Two, round side, round side, three. All right, we want that thing to Slow. Before the side kick ever hits the ground, the back fist is already on its way. All right, five. There we go. Good. You change legs. Same thing. All right. And then remember, I'm still looking at them. I really don't have to look at my targets much. That's my peripheral vision. I can see his legs without looking at them. I'm gonna focus more on his upper body and see what that does. Boom, boom. So, so I can finish the job. All right. Here you go. One. Two. Look at his hands down when he kicks. Oh, all right, are you doing the same thing? Hey, yeah, don't think you're above the law just because you're a martial artist that someone can't get lucky and get you in the head. Three. <laughs> Those hands up. Four. Look that way. You're looking at the target. You're looking at us. When you guys are kicking, you're looking at us. You're not looking at your legs down here, you're not looking down, your hands are up, you're focusing on the next move. You're always two steps ahead of the other person. All right? Three. Right here. Last one. Four. All right. So remember now we said we were going to switch it. We go upper body first, lower body second. Okay? So if I come through, back fist punch, I still don't look at the legs. Peripheral vision. Okay? You can see stuff down here without looking at it. Right? You can see this coming at him. You don't have to look at it. He's looking at it. Don't look at it. You can see it coming, can't you? Yeah. Okay. Now, there's probably like a half percent of you that have really bad vision that maybe you're, you know, kind of tunnel and you can't see stuff. But I'm pretty confident most of us aren't in that boat yet. I'm not old yet. Well, I should say not that old yet. It's coming though. Anytime now. All right. So here you go. We got back fist, punch, round side. Okay. Back fist punch, round side. Let's have a half side kick. Er, put the brakes on, put that thing all the way out there. Okay, gotta do it all. Remember, uh, if 
I'm sure some of you young people, you've been in some type of simulator, flight simulator, uh, virtual reality glasses, you know, all that kind of stuff. What does that do? It basically puts you in like you're really there doing it. Well, when you do these things, you got to do the same thing. You have to fully extend your legs like you're really trying to hit a target, whether you have one or not. And then it's visual, it's in your head, it's in your brain, and it's a picture. You're stuck with it. Okay, here we go. Uh, upper and lower. Go. There you go. Two. Three. And last one. Four. All right. Nice shot. Good. All right. So that's kind of kind of finish up with some of the techniques today. Now um, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at what we're gonna work on later in the week. So if you're not keeping up with your lessons, you are missing out. And that is the spin back fist. Okay. Now you're probably wondering why you hardly or never have seen these. We are not allowed to do these in class sparring because what happens is too many people they spin without looking and throw their arm out and guess where it goes? It's like a radar right to the nose most of the time. Um, we will teach it to you for self-defense uh, so you have that skill but you can never use those in class. All right. So down the road when we're back on the mat sparring can't throw those things, can't throw them at tournaments, but the way they work basically is you're spinning like any other spin and you're flinging that arm out and it's straightening out the last second and you're still aiming the same knuckles and then throwing it in its target. And it doesn't always have to be a full rotation spin. You know, sometimes it could be, you know, he throws a punch at me, I block it and just turn around and hit it in the back of the head with it just because they're really hard to block and people don't ever expect them. So uh, we will be teaching you that this week. Is it gonna be Wednesday or Friday? You'll have to wait and find out. I'm not telling you. But, uh, so, glad to have you with us on May 4th, this Monday. Um, it was kinda nice. Uh, April went a little faster than those couple weeks in March when we first went those quarantine stuff, but I'm feeling good that we could be back on the mat, hopefully maybe toward the end of this month for a little bit. So cross your fingers. But till then, we're warriors, okay? We're martial artists, we're warriors. We make it work no matter what. And that's why we got that warrior challenge coming to you real soon. It's a three day event, which means you have three days to finish the challenges. You don't have to do them all in one day uh, because they are going to be challenging, like doing 75 kicks each leg all at once and you time it. That's one part of the challenge. Or doing 15, 20 yard sprints, we're running back and forth and timing that. So you might not want to do those back to back. Or maybe you're like a super warrior and you say, I can take it. I don't mind throwing up on the grass. What do you think? I can take it. That could be like the super warrior challenge. You know, you gotta eat something and then do it. That could oh God. Be. <laughs> it's kinda like the Krispy Kreme challenge, if you've ever seen that. Uh, they raise a huge amount of money for a charity, but basically you run a mile, you eat a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts, and then you run another mile, and if you throw up, you're automatically disqualified. So you can't uh, throw up, and then all the money they raise for that race, I can't remember what charity it goes, but uh, anyway, they raise quite a bit of money there. So anyway, have a great Monday. We'll look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday.